<laughs> I said you were Charlie Brown and he's Snoopy. And I think that's Snoopy sitting on top of the doghouse. Why am I Snoopy? No, you're Charlie, Charlie Brown. Brown. Oh, he's Snoopy. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for joining us on Canary Sessions. My name is Hudson, and uh, today in the studio we have Paperback. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Anytime. For Thanks for yeah. having me. down the line and uh, tell us your names. Uh, my name is Jonathan. My name is Owen. I'm Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Tyler. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you in here today. Um, so can can y'all tell us how how each of you met each other? 
Uh, yeah, I'll take the mic on this one. the glue. Okay, so uh, the way the band started was I was working on like a solo album, and it was under the moniker of Paperback because I wanted to make it like a concept record and put it on paperback. But that didn't happen because I figured out concept records are hard. Um, <laughs> and so I've known Caleb the longest. I've known him because he and I used to play in hardcore bands back in the day, and our bands would play together. Um, I met Owen through a church, actually, in Winston-Salem. We were playing together. And Tyler, um, we played a venue together in uh, Drunk Horse Pub in Fayetteville. And then we started playing back and forth at his house. And we liked him a lot and then did, did a tour with his band. And we've been friends ever since. That's awesome. That's great. Tyler, are you OK? You look a little down over there. It's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> He's old. <laughs> Oh, man. So how, how long have y'all been playing music together? Two, three and a half years. July 2015. Yeah, July 2015. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, three and a half years. Wow. That's, that's wow. awesome, guys. That's is awesome. that including me? Or is that... <laughs> he, he, you, Seven oh, months. Oh, wow. It We're too hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tyler's been playing with us since March? March. Yeah. March. Yeah. And that's been fun. It was like, it's just, it's cool. 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 So can y'all, can y'all go down the line and talk about your, uh, talk about your biggest inspirations? Sure. Uh, I'm heavily influenced by a band called Pedro the Lion and David Bazan. Uh, it's probably my biggest influence. And then as well, just like grunge bands like Balance and Composure and Nirvana and all mm -hmm. those bands. Ooh. I like a lot of music. <laughs> uh, wow. I don't know. I always say, like, a, my first go to is Circus Survive because I just, like, I love them. They were kind of like why I wanted to play music. Uh, it's like Circus Survive, definitely, like, as far as guitar goes. I feel like songwriting or maybe, like, lyrics, I guess. Like, I just really like folk music. I really like, like, City and Color, or, like, Iron and Wine, or, like, old stuff. Like, I love Woody Guthrie. Da so, da like, Dallas Green, man. Yeah, oh he's, God. he's fantastic. Did, oh. have, have you ever listened to... I'd have to, his kids. <laughs> have you ever listened to um, to You and Me? Uh, um, hey, uh, it's Pink, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Their, their cover of uh, No Ordinary Love, <laughs> mm. it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't know who decided. That was just like, you know whose harmonies would work really, really well together? Yeah. And then, oh. Whoever they did, they need to be in charge of the music business because yes. it's, it's, it was a masterpiece. Like the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh man, um, I listen to a lot of punk rock, uh, a lot of old punk music. Um, bands like Descendants and Bad Religion are some of my favorites. And then when I started playing, I only played in hardcore bands. And then so seeing like, well, I guess it's just the music that I listen to and the music I play have always been really different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like had a weird effect on my drumming as far as like what I learn and how I feel out my playing. Um, do you feel like do you feel like that's that's strictly like circumstance, or do you think you wanted that differentiation between what you liked and what you play? I definitely think it's circumstance. I have a lot of weird physical limitations with my drumming that like this band has really helped me break out of. Um, I always played double kick pedal as a crutch, even going into this band, and uh, just this band has helped my stamina and my footwork a lot. It's cool. And then um, nowadays my music taste is a little more modern i guess i found a lot of new bands just playing <laughs> playing in this band and then uh some of my go-to favorites are uh alkaline trio and joyce manor nice i like a lot of music you know like that one song off of tony hawk's american wasteland <laughs> <laughs> that that whole soundtrack <laughs> that's incredible that's awesome. Yeah. So, how do y'all how do y'all write songs? Like, do you do you write them individually and bring them together, or do you find that like you write them as a group and that works better for you? We, so we come we we come at each other <laughs> with individual pieces all the time, and I like I don't think since the first set of songs Jonathan wrote that. Um, any one person has really just like written a whole song. 
and then like we never really know what to uh to say our music is style wise just because we all come from so many different spots and get inspiration from so many places so it's been it's been a really cool blend and just seeing how playing over things and changing things up as we're going before we commit to like one final version of the song is always fun and I was going to say also, like, the, the cool thing about the newest record is that it's actually songs that we've all written together, mm -hmm. like uh, Under the Weather and, and Waste of Space. Those are songs that we wrote as a band and not necessarily um, as individual parts. Yeah. So that was really cool because we just kind of, like, got together one day and we were like, we're going to write some songs. And so that... <laughs> we wrote, uh, uh, we, f we finished up uh, I Know Problem Solver off the record and then Waste of Space and then... Pretty much like Runaways Gospel, Under the Weather, Waste of Space, and uh, what, which one did Problem we? Solver. Problem Solver were pretty much like we were going in the studio on Saturday, and then we all got together that like Thursday night, and we're like, okay, like we need to write some songs real fast. So it was like, it was even cool because there were parts like all of us <coughs> even kind of changed those going into the studio, like versus what we kind of went in. So it was like, mm. yeah, it's just cool. How, how did. Um were you, were you gonna say something? I wanted to say uh, it. It made it seem like we're not prepared as a band <laughs> with what Owen just said. We did not intend to write a full length. We were gonna put out an EP and then do a split, which is six songs together. Mm -hmm. And we got signed to Cardigan Records, and Cardigan Records was like, "Yeah, we need a full length." So we were just like, "Well, we'll all right, we'll do it." So, so yeah, that's why we did full, like recorded or wrote two songs on a Thursday and recorded them on a Sunday. So how was that process recording a full length? Did you find that it was did you find that it was stressful or or different or a new challenge like I guess It wasn't I guess it didn't really feel like writing a full length because like he said we were going to do the EP and do a split and then um they came at us with the full length and so we just kind of had to like write a couple extra songs and I guess we didn't really record it traditionally like you would. Mm -hmm. We had three separate sessions, I think. Four. Four, where we did, you know, drums for two songs, then we went through and did all the guitar and the vocals, and we finished those songs, and we would come back and record a few more songs the next weekend from start to finish instead of tracking all of one instrument at a time. So, yeah, I didn't really get the full-length vibe out of it, but the product is a full-length, and it's badass, so. Which is... <laughs> Also, the cool thing about it is that, like, all the tones are kind of broken up because it was four different sessions. So, like, the drums on one song will sound completely different compared to another yeah, song. Yeah, different head for, like, three different sessions. Yeah, yeah. I yeah I used three different heads and then use a, a Kempter for one session, too, which was badass, by the way. Did you um, did you all record in the same place? Like, the same studio? Yeah, or? it was the same studio for every session. It was a Dead Peasant Studio in Elkin, North Carolina, if you get the chance go record there. Brandon Hamby, who owns it, is a mastermind. The man. He's the man. i 
sounds of the outside I squeeze the trigger tight Tell me about Cardigan Records and getting signed and that whole process. So, what, we, what's the story there? So, we were good friends with a band called Magnolia, uh, and they changed their name to Proper Sleep. Yeah, yeah. My great. band actually played with them. Oh, they're, sick! They're super cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super cool guys. We're great actually band. gonna hopefully have them here on season two. Oh, so. wow. that'd be sick. But uh, yeah, so we knew them really well, and then they announced that they were signed to Cardigan. And that was that was really cool. And then I think Ben and I, just who was the singer of that band, had a conversation, and he was like, "Yeah, uh, Shane's looking for new bands. Uh, you guys should definitely, you know, try and go that avenue." And then Shane and I started emailing back and forth, um, and he was like, "You guys need a little bit more tour experience." So we took about six months and just grinded. And then uh, at the end or the beginning of this year, he was like, "Okay, I'm cool with signing you guys now." Nice. So. It was definitely uh, an interesting experience. Uh, first time I've ever communicated with a label back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's intimidating, to say the least. Uh, but yeah, Shane is a really cool dude who owns Cardigan Records, uh, has a great roster of bands. So if nothing else, check out Cardigan Records. How do you? So soon the truth. They're up. <laughs> we did a little tour with them back in uh, September. Do you feel like any dynamics have changed since you have signed and released the new album with them? Uh, do you feel like your experience playing shows together is different? Like, how how is that? We had to get smarter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with how we do everything. Um, things weren't really in as intentional, I guess, before signing to the label. It was like, play the songs you want, the shows you want, when you want, how you want, and then you've got like a whole another like outside force, not changing anything, but like guiding you to make smarter and better decisions. Mm -hmm. It's been cool. <laughs> that's that's your, yeah no it's uh it yeah it's been cool. It's definitely given us the opportunity to like meet a lot more people just because uh <clears throat> he's got a big um say he I guess it's the encompassing that is uh, cardigan, but the roster is just really really cool. Like we were able to meet uh like our boys and so soon the truth. They're from Texas. Uh, there's also a band and author a poet. They're also from Texas. Uh, that's on the roster and we got to meet both of them when they came through and we had like a big you know little cardigan kind of like day mm -hmm. and uh just all of us so it's been it's been cool like just opened up a lot of doors that <sighs> yeah we didn't know what the doors were there <laughs> yeah i get yeah it's like whenever you're walking into like an old house and then a door just kind of pops out of the wall and you're like i didn't even know that was there yeah, Has that's. That, that I don't think I've ever had that happen to me personally. <laughs> Where is this illustration going? Yeah, I guess I, I don't know. I'm a bit, I've, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take this now. Um, I was gonna say also there is like, there's an expectation, you know, like if we want to have a couple months off, we have to plan it for sure. Like with the record coming out, um, it was crucial to make sure that we went on like a big tour to celebrate and everything like that. We just have to make sure that we're. Um, constantly busy I guess um, because like I said there definitely is an expectation from the label to make sure that we can uh, you know promote the music and everything like that which before you know it wasn't a big deal we could tour and you know have time off and just not run social media which we're very still not good at uh, we're getting better at it though but yeah I guess the expectation is different <laughs> You'll get your chance, I promise. <laughs>
I forgot what the question was. <laughs> the label. About Cardigan. Oh. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> cardigan oh. is a pretty cool guy. Oh, Pull over. No, it's, it's a cardigan. cardigan. But um, how is your how has your touring experience changed as far as um, like your first tour and how you like s- like set that up versus tours now? Our first three tours were in a minivan, so now we're in an actual, or was it three or four? It was four. The first four Too tours, many. first four tours and a teen uh, weekenders in a minivan uh, trying to sleep like this. Okay, here's the thing. You, you give Athena respect. Okay? Uh, Athena's, Athena's a great van. She's lovely. But what, uh, what color is Athena? Silver. Silver. Oh. Now we got Dirty Gertie outside. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is what Gertrude? Is, <laughs> but uh, I prefer Dirty Gertie. <laughs> what is what is Dirty Gertie? Dirty Gertie is a uh, well. It's here you go. Here's your chance. <laughs> I bought the van for nineteen hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Two doors don't work. Uh, well, one of them is the driver door, <laughs> the driver side. We picked up duct tape on tour, and that's how we survived. When you reach a, when you reach the speed limit of seventy miles per hour, it pops open. It only popped open on me. It twice. did it to me four times on the way down to Winston tonight. Oh, okay, good. Glad someone else got it. But I'm I'm a master at my own vehicle. So. <laughs> got a ratchet strap that door closed. Yeah. I was gonna say also. Cool. Sorry. One that's sorry. One that's one that. <laughs> Uh, as far as touring as well, I, I'm kind of the one that does all the booking, so I've learned a lot from the first tour to what we're doing now because, I mean, with the first tour, I think it was 10 days, and I was I was struggling to book, like, three or four of those dates, and we just did a 28-day tour, and I, I had maybe three dates that I couldn't book, and that was, like, all the way out west. It was, a, like, a full U.S. thing. Uh, so for me, it's it's been a lot of, of learning and gathering contacts and just uh, dealing with a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. But y'all are oh good. Yeah. I just want to say, as far as touring goes, in my experience, um, how much we've all grown together mm-hmm. yeah. has been wild. Because like your first time being trapped with somebody for you know over a week, you're just like you in never know what to it. You know, yeah. Not this close can you to can you t- like uh, go into further detail on that and like how y'all's first tour was and how you're like, did y'all get tired of each other really fast or? or... Yeah. <laughs> it all depends on the day. It depends on everybody's mood, and then yeah. like you, you got to find out what everybody's pet peeves are and like. You'll find out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and try and like yeah, it's really hard to like. You gotta learn to address your bandmates without being a complete asshole. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm I'm really bad about being really straightforward, like, as far as like not considering how somebody else is gonna feel. And I've definitely like had to like, I've had to try really hard with that one. Um, hopefully I'm doing all right. But I know like, we argue less and less as time goes mm-hmm. on to the point where it's almost non-existent, and that baffles me because every band I've ever played in before this, especially touring, and we didn't even tour as much as we are, um, you just grow to dislike everybody more and more (laughs) as the time goes on. But again, another cool thing since signing to the label and the way touring has changed too is just like, we've been getting to play with some badass bands. Yeah. A lot of really good bands. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's probably my favorite part of touring. Yeah. Yeah. I was... But, like, as far as, like, the first tour goes, like, the most noticeable or, yeah, I guess noticeable or notable, whichever one you want to use, uh, as far as, like, the first tour to now is the first tour was really, really cool because, uh, like, we, eh, I don't know, like, we just, we went down to Florida and back, and it was cool. We got to do a lot of cool things. We went out with our friends in Come Clean, uh, uh, which is another great, great band. Uh, had a really good time with them, but just, from that first one to now, just like going back and hitting some of the same places, it's always cool. Like, especially when you're, cause we don't really have like a hometown. We all kind of lived all over for a long time. Uh, so not really having a hometown, not really having, uh, you know, like a real city to call your own. It's really cool going to other cities that are completely different from yours. And you know, like somebody shows up wearing a shirt they bought for me the last time or, you know, People have been listening to something and are starting to know the lyrics, or like even if they don't, they're at least kind of trying. And mm-hmm. it's just like, just seeing, like not only growing with each other, but getting to kind of meet other people out and like grow with 
those people is really really cool too and um so y'all are y'all are about to go on tour uh in like the next week or so right uh we were you were um yeah just uh some things with that like as far as uh just like some kind of like scheduling issues and uh we we were I'll, this man scrambled to get some stuff done and he got it all booked but uh we just just kind of going into the new year we were like let's write so we're gonna do that okay i had two weeks to book a 10 week or a 10 day tour <laughs> oh. i want to i want to preface that but anyway <laughs> but yeah but uh we just kind of you know we just came off the month-long tour and we really want to hit the grind again hard next year and it just kind of made a little more sense to just kind of just call it for the month and we're actually instead we're all kind of gonna just shack up for a little bit and write yeah and just write just kind of you know we we gradually like every time we write our songs like in our in my opinion i don't know how narcissistic this is or not but like every time we write we just get better like we groove better we're feeling each other better you 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 all seem like you have a very good chemistry with each other when you play yeah and it just it keeps getting more and more so it was just like let's just write and let's just really see like let's just put our best foot forward and just really kind of see what we can do whenever we're at a point where all we like all we can do is write there's nothing else kind of making us do this you know kind of time restraint it's just like let's just get together and write i'm excited I think the cool thing about taking this opportunity to write too is all of us already took some time off of work for this tour. So as opposed to like, hey, let's have practice, you know, we've got this two hour window. We have like a few full days, which I don't think we've ever done before as a band. And I, I'm really excited to just have a lot of time to put into into something that I already know is going to be better than the last thing. And then um, writing the last few songs for the album were the, the first time we got to write with Tyler. And uh, I'm excited to really be able to put in an effort and let Tyler be a bigger part than he got to be last time. We're, we're going to stay at my house for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I want, uh, I want to hear from each one of you. Um, best show you played and weirdest or worst show you played. OK. Good thing I'm starting first because I think this is everyone's personal favorite. Uh, exactly a year and two days ago, we played at a house venue mm. in Boone called Westview House, which Boone is what we call our hometown just because we have the most number of friends there. And I live in Wilkesboro, which is basically like a suburb of Boone. They kind of accepted us first too, yep. like the first kind of place we were like. Do you can do you consider that your hometown? Because yes. If you see our name on a flyer, it'll probably say paperback from Boone, North Carolina. Um, but yeah, we uh, we played a show at that house, and it was also like our music video shoot uh, for Growing Pains. You can watch that on YouTube. Um, but shameless plug. <laughs> shameless plug. But yeah, uh, we played a show there, and it was in a two-car garage, and there were probably 150 to 180 kids inside this really small garage. And that was, that was definitely a really fun show. Um, and unfortunately, because of that show, the house got shut down and is no longer doing shows. Oh, no. Because of some issues that happened. So I guess that proves how rowdy it was. Um, as far as weird shows, um, uh, probably when we played the first tour, we played a house in Arkansas. And um, like I said, I was still used to booking or I was still getting used to booking, and uh, it was, I met this guy on the DIY tour postings page on Facebook, and he was like, yeah, I, I house bands all the time. That was not the case. Um, so we show up, and it's basically just, uh, it's looking like it was gonna be a garage, but it's just like a piece of wood uh, extending over the, over the house or whatever, and it was really grimy, it was really gross. Um, there was, it smelled of cat pee. It was just like a dirt floor, so you're all like moving around and just oh. kicking dust up everywhere. Oh, we're man. all getting coughing. Yep. And then he was like, you, you guys are more than welcome to stay at my house. And then we drove through the night. They did make us uh, peanut butter sandwiches, though. Peanut butter banana. Peanut butter banana, banana and those, those yeah. are pretty tight. They're absolutely lovely people. That's not nice. Lovely people, yeah. yes. Um, I just think that maybe a good clean would have been nice <laughs> for that house. But yeah, that's... Uh, 
best and worst for me. Oh. Best show. I know my worst, or not like worst, but weirdest. Uh, this last tour when we were in Missoula, uh, <laughs> we played this VFW hall, uh, which was cool because it was like a bar in front, and then just this, like most VFW halls I've ever seen, like been to, is just like a big open room. Uh, so it was cool, but we played for like three people. They were really, really cool people. Uh, and then we were. Nine people. It's, it's like the sound guy checked us and then left. Yeah. Um, oh, no. So that was a thing. Yeah, he was like, oh, are y'all's levels good? All right. And then I never saw him again for the rest of the night. He just uh, dipped out. Yeah. yeah, so there's like, yeah, there's like three or four people uh, in there watching us. And it was cool. We played a set. We had a great time. Like, I don't know if they were into it. We were into it. So it's like, it's always just a good time. But, uh, then we finished, we were going to drink, and then some uh, some more people came in and were like, hey, we heard there was music, and we're like, well, we just got done. They're like, do you want to play again? <laughs> so we got up and played pretty much the exact <laughs> same set for the same three people as before. Plus, like, four other plus, people. Plus, yeah, plus, like, four more people. And uh, we taught Ben, who was with us playing bass, we taught him a song, like, off the old, old, old record on the spot. And he was just like, all right, cool, because he... Uh, he he shot a video for it. We never did anything with. We're just kind of like keeping it on the back burner. Sorry, but so he was like, I heard that song like a thousand times. I think I know it. <laughs> uh, and then we were done. Uh, I had some lady uh, who just it kept pointing, uh, like she just kept kicking me in the butt, uh, and like kicking you in the butt. Yeah, she was just like really close and really touchy feely. And I'm just, uh, I don't, I don't do well with that. So that was weird. Best show. Ladies who are watching, you know, he's not, he doesn't do well with that. So. I love my girlfriend. She's fantastic. I have, I, like, the greatest girlfriend in the world. I want to say also there are, like, three venues in Missoula, Montana. <laughs> so it's very hard to book a show. It was cool. We were there. It was, like, 34 degrees when we got out of the van. And I'm like, is it always this cold? And they're like, this is a warm day. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, you're, you're messing. There's, no, don't mess with me like that. The dude that booked the show was in a T-shirt, and he was fine. Yeah, the, there's a chick there in a crop top. I was just like, this is nothing. I'll throw, throw a coat on. I'll be fine. Yeah. So it's just like, word. So cool. I mean, like, I got, I got more hair on their chest than me, I guess. I don't know. Uh, best show. His first show. He was sick. <laughs> uh, but it was at Black Cat and Boone, which they're not doing shows anymore. But uh, it was a fun time. Yeah, it was a, yeah, there was a pattern. Uh, but it was just, it was really, really wild. That was a, yeah, it was in March. So, like I said, it was his first show with him, or our first show with him. Obviously, his it's he's had a lot of shows with him. Uh, but, but yeah, but it was just great. It was just like the crowd was really, really fun. Everybody was kind of participating. It was the first, like, not the first time, but it just it was one of those times like when you play a when you play a show and you just really kind of feel at home. Like you're like, man, this is like this this is awesome. Like this is really really cool. So, yeah, probably up there with a whole lot of other shows, but that's the first one that came to mind. Awesome. <clears throat> as far as best shows go, anything in Boone is always fantastic for us. Um, Jonathan was talking about the video shoot at Westview, and I think we played Westview maybe six or seven times, and it was always just a blast. Always a lot of people that were there and involved in all the bands playing, and it... I don't know, you go to a lot of places, especially playing bars, and there's people that are there to drink and hang out that could care less if you're there doing what you're doing, but everybody that came to Westview House was always like really intentional about giving giving their all, I guess, yeah. and like, matching the band's energy, so it was always a fun time. Um, yeah, those all, all those shows are the best shows. I don't want to like talk about worst shows, because like, try to stay positive, and I yeah. think any show we get to play. Weird show. Weird show. Yeah. Any show we get to play together is a good show. Um, we got to play the City Museum in St. Louis oh, yes. last summer. And actually, Tyler's, uh, we were touring with Tyler's old band. Um, and I guess, oh, somebody hit us up. They had contacted the promoter <laughs> and they were like, hey, you know, do you have anybody that can play the City Museum? We need uh, two bands. And so we did it, and then what it, the city museum is, is like, you think museum, like, go in, look at stuff, don't touch, no. It's a giant playground. Um, I don't remember how many levels there were to it, but we got there, we had about five hours just to wander around, and I, I know I didn't see all of it, 
this time of my life and they had just like this little bar like right in the middle of it with like this little stage set up and it was it was a weird one but I definitely don't think I'll ever forget it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to remember a lot of the shows. Um, Already? Dude, it's been like almost a year, man. Um, I'd say my, well, I wouldn't say worst, weirdest, which Owen kind of already ruined it for you. Uh, yeah. You weren't in Missoula. No, that's, oh, wait. You said your, that was, his best show. that was your best show. That was my worst show. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was sick. I had food poisoning. Oh, man. To I, preface. No, we're not prefacing. Tyler and I got lunch that day, and Tyler was like, man, it makes me mad. I never get <laughs> sick. And then going up the mountain, Tyler's like, I got a headache. Oh, man, you, so you so jinxed good. yourself. I'm puke. I'm going to puke. So, yeah, I uh, was very sick. I sat on a cinder block and played bass and puked behind my <laughs> bass cab for about 20 minutes. Oh. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, so that was definitely the weirdest and worst for me. Um, I, ah, that's, that's my favorite. I think it was the third night, second night of tour the last time. Uh, we played Emo Riley. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't remember a lot you of played, it. I just remember... You played I played where? We, we played... Oh, crap. The local 506. Okay. They had a... Uh, emo night. Emo night. And that's where, like, bands... Well, sometimes bands play. I, I feel like bands play all the time. Yeah. Um, and then they just blast, like... A DJ gets up there and hits play. It was Newfound Glory. And it's, like, and everything uh, that Glory. we uh, ever Bayside. grew up on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The singer for Bayside. They were the guest DJs. Put press play and they press play and then they walked off stage um <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah i don't remember a lot from that night but it was awesome it, i just remember having a great time it's also a very last minute show it was yeah. awesome last minute show also with our boys in come clean also, and come clean is releasing an album and you should get that it comes out friday come clean comes out friday <laughs> um and clean. here's owen with the weather are you under the weather, Tyler? It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. That's actually what that's changing my seasons all around. From running nose to black out. we'll have one more question okay. um so what is your what is your favorite your most favorite gear you've ever had there's so much gear in this band oh my mm. we're we're bad impulse buying debt 
We all like I hoard gear. He trades gear, and I scrape it off the bottom of the band. He's had like how many? Okay, hold on. When we started the band, you're playing the twin. Yep. Then you went to the AC30. Yep. Then after the AC, did you get the rock reverb after that? I did. Then the rock reverb. Then back to the AC30. Yep. And then back to the twin. Yep. And then. I had the orange. Right, the CR120. CR120. Got a supersonic. Got it. No, went back to the twin. Yep, that's right. Then got a supersonic and is now back on the CR120. So Jonathan doesn't like anything. Why well, gotta call me out like <laughs> that? Yeah. Honestly, oh, I got mine. Uh, that's over the course of three no, years I I now. totally get it. You know, you got an itch. You know, you just. Uh, Seymour Duncan Power Stage 170. It's about like this big, and I can put it on my pedal board and run it. So then all I have to do is carry in my cab on my pedal board, and it makes loading in fantastic. Okay, since I just got called out on on the training of the gear thing, <laughs> um, to prevent that, I bought a Line 6 HX FX, and that thing is awesome because, as they said, I have a bad problem with trading gear. I was really bad with pedals. Like, I would have a pedal for, like, two days and then just trade it for something else. And then get it back, like, nine months later. My problem is that I'm a bad guitar player, so I think getting more gear will make me feel better about myself or make me sound better. That's just, that's just a problem with I guitars. know it is. Yeah. But, but, yeah, the, the Line 6 HX effects, uh, you know, don't be worried because it says Line 6 on it. It's actually really good. Like, uh, all the drives, all the, all the delays, all the reverb. It's, it's made my life a lot easier. Um, especially with touring and everything like that, to not have cables go bad, because that's the most frustrating thing on the planet, is to have like a bad patch cable and try and figure out what's messed up on your signal chain. So, line six HX effects. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's probably that's that's probably right. I uh, no, I, you know, I sell I sell and trade stuff a lot. I'm getting I'm going from like the trading phase. Going from a Jonathan to an Owen to hoarding gear, but hoarding drums is really hard. <laughs> There's, I have no space. There's drums. I actually like my car has been parked in at our house for a long time, and I have <laughs> drum stuff in the car because they just ha don't have room in the house for it. Um, yeah, I think like one symbol that I've played the longest, which I didn't even play it tonight. Um, <laughs> it's cracked. I have a 24 inch Sabian Bash ride. And I had the 21 before I bought the 24, and I, like that bash ride's been the most consistent thing in my setup for. It's been playing it as long as we've been a band, and in, in, into my previous bands, I break them a lot. Um, Sabian's real cool with their warranty, so I buy one new, and it has a two-year manufacturer's warranty. And the last one they replaced four times in the two years, and then I bought a new one, and I'm getting ready to get it replaced for the second time. <laughs> um, in just under a year so yeah it's cool when uh companies actually want to help you out and don't give you the run around when you need them the most <laughs> i like the orange dual tear 30 watt tubes it's pretty tight it sounded great and the tu3 nice. the tuner just, 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 just mic the tuner is the best part of my setup it sounds best when it's on <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on and hanging with us. Um, and uh, thank you, Heyday Guitars, for, for hosting this. Uh, if you haven't checked out Heyday before, it's on 414 Brookstown Avenue in Winston-Salem. Uh, they have great vintage guitars and amps, and it's definitely just a cool environment to be in. Um, definitely go check it out. Um, if you're interested in seeing more stuff like this, uh, please hit subscribe and hit the little bell for updates. Uh, my name is Hudson. Thank you so much for, for checking us out. Can I